last, uh, the last segment today, uh, and I, I should put a plug in, this, this stuff is the nuts and bolts, right? So we're going to talk a little bit about what a credit score is, um, how to read your, your um, credit report, these kinds of things, and that'll get towards the end. Do you know what the difference is between secured and unsecured credit? Okay. Everyone's nodding. I'm looking. No? Okay. We'll talk about that. That's the objective. That's not, we're not going to answer it right now. We're just going through objectives. So know the costs. Sometimes the fees are more expensive than the interest. It's good to know up front. Um, know the factors that people, that, that lenders use to make the decision whether or not to give you a loan. And it, it, what do you think the biggest factor is today? Different than ever, maybe until like, you know, before three years ago. What's the biggest factor? In, the biggest factor is in what receiving a loan? Like in whether the bank, whether the bank, let's not, say, let's not say biggest factor, but an, an additional factor that's a big deal today that wasn't a big deal four years ago in, in why, whether or not they'll give you a loan. Now whether you can pay it back. <laughs> whether they have the money to give it to you. So I have, a, I've got, a, I'll just tell you a quick story. I've got a client who, um, he works for a consulting firm, flies all over the country, makes about a million dollars a year. He's incredibly well off. He went to refinance his house, $700,000 mortgage. He makes enough to pay the mortgage off every year. They said no. And he was like, what the? And I'm like, it's just the bank, it's not you. I mean, it's, the banks don't have the same capital they had four years ago. In fact, banks have this big hole in their balance sheets uh, right now. And so small loans, and you, you see, you see um, B of A and everyone's coming out and saying, you know, we're lending this much to, for businesses and small businesses. And, and you can rest assured that they have that money there that they're going to lend, but they're not, they're not letting go of all of it because their, their capital structures are at risk still today. They have, um, they marked, they changed the rules to allow banks to, to count whatever's on their balance sheet as an asset. And so some of the things on their balance sheet that they're saying are worth a dollar are worth 30 cents. And so they have to be very careful and this is all to say that sometimes a bank's decision has nothing to do with you. If you get, if you get turned down by one bank, go to another bank. All right. Credit, the ability to borrow money, loan. Questions? <laughs> okay. Why is it important that you have credit? There's some answers up there if you are stumped. Meaning when you don't have cash. <laughs> he can read. <laughs> I mean, I love the concept someone said earlier, use cash. Uh, who, what's his name? Ramsey. Dave Ramsey. He says use cash everywhere. I th you know, ideally, yes. But sometimes in an emergency, you don't have enough cash. Sometimes you want to make a bigger purchase. Sometimes you want to get zero interest rate and pay for the next 18 months because you buy a TV at Best Buy, right? So there's, there's reasons to do it. And so just you, you do it wisely. Uh, but it's, that's why you want to have good credit so that you have access to these kind of tools. Make sense? Pretty self-explanatory. So we talked about secured, unsecured. So there's sort of four major terms. The first one is that uh, collateral. It's the guarantee. It's the thing that they can take away from you if you don't make the payment on the. So every time you get a, buy a house, your loan from the bank for the house is collateralized by the house itself. Unless you do something neat and you have lots of real estate and you collateralize something else to buy your house, right? But, it's collateralized by something, otherwise they don't give you home loans. Loans of that size require collateral, okay? Which means if you screw up and don't make a payment, they come take your house. That's called foreclosure. That's what's going on a lot right now is when you read that in the media, that's what that's all about, okay? So you have secured loan, unsecured loan. Does anyone know what, what kind of assets you can borrow against? So this is what kind of assets you can use as collateral. What kind of assets can you pledge to a bank or a lending institution of any kind and that they will use as collateral for a loan that you want to get from them. You get your house, home equity line, that's, that's the big one. But oftentimes when you buy a car, the car's on collateral. But you know if you pay that car off, uh, I know that, I know that the, the credit union in Berkeley will loan you loan against your car. So if you've got, if you've got credit card issues, you know, if you have credit card debt or you want to avoid credit card debt and you have a car and you can make monthly payments, you can go to the credit union and for, because it's collateralized, it's a lot lower interest rate than a credit card would be, especially if you've got bad credit, you can get a loan on your car. Now, your car may be worth $1,000, maybe worth 
$10,000, but you can still get a loan on the car. Okay? So it's, just, it's a tool you can use to get access to money if you need it. I'm not saying go take a trip, borrow the money on your car. That's not what I'm saying. If you have an emergency and you need, you need cash, it's a way to get it. So you know what a consumer installment loan is? Has anyone ever purchased a couch on credit? Right? Or a TV on credit and said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make payments. So the first thing I'm going to say is don't do that. All right? I, so I, I mentioned the car. That's a, that's a consumer installment loan. An installment loan is, is I'm going to take $5,000 from you. I'm going to make regular installment payments back until the $5,000 is paid off. And those installment payments will include principal payments and interest payments. So I'm going to pay off at the end of four years. All the principal and interest will be paid off, and you'll have the loan. And I've paid you installments. That's what an installment loan is. And you can get that for a car. You can get, you can get a personal loan from a bank installment. You can get a personal line of credit from a bank. It's a little different. So, no, I, I have no couches and TVs. You wait until you can afford it. Cars, sometimes you, you, want, it, you want to get a loan. Uh, you need a car to get to work. Your car dies. You've got to have a car. Right? So sometimes you have to do that. So my first car I paid 3500 bucks for. I borrowed $3,000 from the bank. Not true. Not true. Not my first car. My third car, that's what happened. The first one my parents gave me. And you know, you know that car, I'm sure. Uh, you probably had similar ones. So uh, credit cards. We've talked a lot about this. Are there any like, burning questions additional about credit cards? Use them as little as possible. Pay them off every month. This is the, you know, Dave Ramsey, if you use them, he'll say that. Susie Orman will say that. Everyone that talks about finance says minimize your credit card usage, pay it off every month. That's the goal. Home loans. So we talked about this. Home purchase loans, refinance loans, equity lines of credit. Does everyone know what the difference about those things are? Three things are. Home loans are you, you buy a home, you get a first mortgage. Okay. A refinance is you, you, when you bought your home, you, you got a six and a quarter percent mortgage, and rates went down, and you decided, you know, uh, I want to take advantage of lower rates. They're now 4%. I'm going to refinance, reduce my payment. Okay? Or, all of 2004, your home went up in value, and you had 40000 extra money there, and you borrowed against your house with a refinance to pull money out of your house. Hopefully, you didn't use that to buy a car or take a vacation. Uh, so there's, there's different reasons to start a business. Uh, hire the ghost rider that Mike uh, Van Horn talked about so that you get a new roof. Uh, hot water heater. I mean, there's all kinds of reasons that you'd want to have access to that. So one of the things I said to people, I don't say this as often anymore, is, uh, this is 2000, 2004, is get a credit line. Don't use your credit line so you have access to it. Problem is, when banks have capital problems of their own, they pull your credit line. Right? So it doesn't really it cost you 70 bucks a year to have one. If you have a house to get a credit line, it doesn't cost much. And you can capture some of that equity and use it if you need it. If they take it away and you haven't used it, who cares? Right? It's not a $70 a month or $70 a year isn't that big of an expense. And that's the home equity line. This is kind of how it works, right? So you have a house with $250,000. You owe $200,000 on it. That means you own $50,000 of that house. You own the house. It's in your name, but you owe the bank $200,000 on it, okay? What's the best type of loan? See, this, this, the first one is, um, what would you use to finance a college education? If you only had these, the first choice, which is not here, is a um, subsidized student loan, not one of your options. <laughs> so which one would you use to finance a college education? Not, who said credit card? Not, credit. not a credit card, yes. That's, I would use home equity. You get the lowest rate, you have collateral against it. You know, if you don't have home equity, then an installment loan would be your, would be your only option. Right? Well, you could also do credit card. So if your home loses value. No, it's, so the, the question, when you ask a parent, yeah, uh, are you, you're a parent, yeah? Are you a parent? Yeah. How old are your kids? Old. <laughs> Already gone? Yeah. Already through college? So if you ask me, I have a seven-year-old and a four-year-old, and I bought my house, and, and I've paid it off, and, and uh, I don't have any money, and my kids need help to go to college, do I give it to them? I have to borrow against the house? Every parent I've ever met will say they borrow against the house. They, they won't, and I will tell them that's not a good idea, and they'll go, I don't care, because mm -hmm. it's their kids. And now, you know, my oldest is seven. So eight years ago, I would have gone, come on, this is not smart. Now I go, well, I get it, right? So the only thing I have left to do in the world is raise good kids, right? Mm -hmm. So we pull out all the stops for them. So when it comes to education, this one in particular, if I had to use a credit card, I wouldn't, right? Mm -hmm. 
That's me. That's not a recommendation, by the way. <laughs> when this goes up on the web, uh, forget it. Yeah, that's not a recommendation. <laughs> Please don't do that. <laughs> okay, make small purchases in a department store such as a $50 kitchen appliance. What do you use? Cash, right? That's the correct answer. If you had to use debt, credit card, right? Simplicity, pay it off at the end of the month. Get some miles so you can travel. If you had to consolidate a couple loans, what would you do? The, the practice of, you know what consolidation is first? Right, when you take, you, you, you owe 10,000 on this loan, 6,000 on this loan. This is a 7%, this is a 5%. You can get them for 4%. You put them together at the 4%. Easier one payment, simple. Uh, simplifying. So in this case, you, you could do an installment loan with a, with a credit union, with a bank. You could do an installment loan pretty easily because you have two loans outstanding. Make it simple. You get your choice of terms, set your payment amounts. You could also use a home equity line. That's, that happens less and less. Probably there's less and less home equity, so that's part of it. What if you want to buy a $500 refrigerator? So the question is, if you have the kind of, if you, so if, remember, we're committed to paying off the credit card every month. Now, if you can't, you know, if you have enough money to do that, then yes, use your credit card. But you get, remember, you got, first commitment is to pay it off every month. So if it's not, if it's not that, then maybe an installment loan. Because usually if you're buying from Fry's, they've got a credit line you can use, and that's the installment loan. And then they've got terms that are better than credit card terms that if you're going to carry it out. And they have the, the repo man, right? They've got the, the refrigerator as collateral. So that, that's why you can usually get a pretty good deal there. So the difference really between a home equity line and an installment loan, interestingly, is a home equity line, you're paying interest only. That's your, most of them. So you can actually get by with a lower payment, but if you do the lower payment, you're not paying off your principal. Right? So this is not always try to pay off your principal. So the benefit, I think the benefit of an installment loan is you're hitting, you have a, you have a set period of time, five years, 10 years, 15 years, and as you make your payment, it's going to principal and interest, and at the end of the time period, it's paid off. No more debt. Whereas a home equity line, if you just pay your interest payments, no guarantee at the end of that time, if, you, know, you have the same debt. You make your interest payments for 15 years, and that's all you make. 15 years from now, you still owe the same amount of money you did at the beginning. So fees, we talked about it, and we'll, we'll, we'll hit one fee in just a minute. Um, so fees are often more expensive up front, but they're only one-time things, right? Unless you're using your credit card, cash out of your credit card, you know, sometimes there's a 3% charge to get cash out of a credit card. Don't ever do that, right? That doesn't make any sense at all. Use the card. If, you, if you're buying from a place that won't take a credit card and needs cash, don't buy, right? That, that's, you're, you're buying a product that you don't need. It's, it's a want, not a need. Because everywhere that, I mean, everywhere that you would need something will take a credit card. Safeway, you know, sorry, Whole Foods. Uh, <laughs> okay, interest, we've talked about that. You ever know what the difference between a fixed and a variable rate is? So do you know what a five-year arm is? Yeah. Really? Does anyone not know what a five-year arm is? Okay, thank you. So, uh, <laughs> so a fixed rate of interest is you're agreeing to a set of terms, fixed rate starting today, going for that whole set of terms. A variable rate is variable starting today, going for the whole you know, length of time that you owe the money. Okay. A five-year arm is you get fixed for five years, and then every one year thereafter, it's adjustable. So you have a variable rate after it's fixed for a period of time. So that's what the five-year arm is. You get seven-year arms, you get 10-year arms. Um, these are just different loan terms. So everyone get the question? So the problem is that we, we had this, um, everyone had five-year arms, the five years were up, and the rates went up. Except the rates didn't go up, the rates went down. It, it can go up, but in this last period of time, rates have plummeted. So I have clients that have five-year arms and now are paying less on their mortgage than they did when they got their mortgage out originally. So while that's true and that's the big risk, the real problem is when you, when you reset, usually when the five-year arm, you have a, you have a variable rate of interest, uh, and sometimes they're interest-only loans. It's the interest-only loans that when they reset, they went to principal and interest, and so now they're making the principal payment as well as interest payment, and that's what they couldn't afford. Yeah. The interest rates dropped, but now the principal was due, and now you, you didn't factor that in because the, the banker told you, now nah, you'll be able to refinance this without a problem. Okay. So these are all the disclosures they have to give you. 
right? They have to tell you what the charges are, have to tell you what your total, total payment is, have to tell you what the amount you're financing is. And there, actually, there's, a, there's usually two columns, right? There's a, there's a column that's, um, uh, it's going to remember this. So uh, there, there's the amount you're financed, and then there's the total, at the end of the debt, if you pay it all back, all the interest, this is the total amount, including interest you have to pay. And the difference, this one's 500000 is your loan. When you pay it all back, it's $900,000. That's the interest you're paying over the life of the loan. Right? That's the, that, it's, it's a very large number, uh, especially out here. In South Dakota, you buy a $100,000 house, you, and then suddenly it's one hundred and fifty. and my dad goes, how much did you pay for your house? Uh, I own five houses, it's less than that. Yeah. Yes? When you're doing these applications, can you actually apply to two different institutions for, for a mortgage at the same time? Because there's nothing to yeah. prepare. They just sort of give you this thing and say it's going to cost. And so could I have a, a Wells Fargo and an Bank of America? Yep. And, then, and you can pick the best options. So, my, so this is the way. I have a guy that's my mortgage broker. His name is Jim Aaron, Pacific Western Mortgage, mortgage Group. He's in Emeryville. I've used him for 18 years. He's incredible. Every one of my clients goes to him. And uh, he is, he's as honest as a day is long. I mean, he, he's an incredible human being. And what he, uh, so the, the first house I bought was actually a condo in Emeryville. Those ones out in the water, you know, the, the condos in Emeryville out in the water? Watergate, right. And so I sat in his office for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, because I'd never done this before, right? I was going to school here, and I was trying to buy a condo. My wife had a $10 an hour job. We should never have qualified for anything. And he got us qualified, and he told us why, and I was nervous and scared, so I talked to him a lot. I got to know the guy really, really, really well. And uh, uh, what he says is go to a mortgage broker. He's a mortgage broker. It makes sense for him to say that. But also ask a credit union. Credit union. Credit union, credit union mortgages don't go through mortgage brokers. So you have to, if you want to look at three credit unions, go to three credit unions, because you're not going to get those rates through. Credit unions are going to have better rates. They're also going to have better service after the fact. They usually don't sell the loans to somebody else. There's all kinds of reasons to use a credit union. But when you go to a mortgage broker, they're going to shop that around. So what you just said, I want to get this from a bank and this from this bank. The mortgage broker will actually do that with 15 different lenders. And they get wholesale rates. So it doesn't cost you more to go to a mortgage broker. You have someone on your side. Problem is they're not all that ethical. Right? So there are, there are lots of bad mortgage brokers out there. Um, there's some good ones. And so you have to find those good ones. So borrowing responsibly. The first one should be uh, pretty obvious, but let's see. If you have overdue bills, do you use your credit card to pay them? I, would, I wouldn't. What I'd do is I'd call, I would call the person you owe money to, or the company. I would call PG&E and say, eh, this is the problem. I got a notice yesterday, actually, that said, uh, this is, that said a seven-day notice. Fine print was, uh, we're shutting off the power to your office on the 31st if your payment doesn't come in. I'm like, I paid, you know, I sent the check in, what happened, I call them up. Like, oh, we don't see it, but don't worry about it. So lenders or, or people that you have services from, they want to know that you're, you intend to pay. If you drag it out, right, and, and you don't ever pay them, they're going to understand that you're screwing them and they're going to shut it off. But if you call them up, you're short one month, they, they'll work with you. They will, especially today, right, because they're shutting people off all the time. They want to know that you're, gonna be, you're trying to be responsible about it. They really do. That's the PG&Es and the AT&Ts of the world. This is not B of A's and those Wells Fargo's of the world. Wells Fargo's a local company. I should be nicer. Uh, should you use credit to make a, Still laughing. I wish they would be. <laughs> should you use credit to make a purchase even if you could pay cash? Yes. Yes. It's possible. No, no reason not to. I mean, if you have the cash in your pocket, maybe you use cash. The problem is, and this is, ever, ever, does anyone ever get into this problem when you, you go, uh, and, you know, I mean, I don't want to admit where I shop, but you, you, go, you, go, you go somewhere and, you, and you're, you're going to buy, a, I'll buy my, my son a, a pajamas at Target. And uh, he's, you pay for the credit card. You've got cash. You pay with the credit card uh, knowing you're going to pay it back. And then, you know, you go someplace else and there's something else you want and you have cash. Right? So you, you've now double dipped into your cash for the, for the month. So that's something to watch out for if you are ever going to use credit. This is why that, that spending worksheet in the very beginning, it's good to keep track of what you spend every day, right? Take one of those little wire-bound notebooks, write it down. Now, the last one, should you use credit if you really wanted something but couldn't afford the monthly payment? Okay. So rent to own, don't. Okay, we're done there. 
Does everybody, you, know, you know what this stuff is? Payday loans? Yes. Okay. So this is, a, this is the compliance officer talking to me. He said, he said uh, $30 on $200, 391%, that, that doesn't seem right. I said, well, okay, it's two weeks. Right? Annualize that, it's 390% interest. Right? And there's people that do this every paycheck. Right? Don't ever do this. I mean, I don't care how embarrassed you are, you go to your neighbor and ask for money. Because this, this, is, this is a downward spiral. It starts this and it's, it's, it ends very quickly. So does anyone know what this is? So you can go to H&R Block. This is, this is actually last year how H&R Block did so well. Because they offered a, they offered to give you money in anticipation of your refund. So that, but you gotta do your taxes there. So you gotta pay their fees, do it their way, da 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 da. It's expensive, right? It's a huge fee. The idea here is these are just ideas that people go to, and I don't know if there's someone out there that's ever done this, but please don't do this. Okay. When you need money fast, what do you do? That's the first one. Remember we said when you have it, when you plan, you build your six-month savings account, and then you don't have to worry about it. You're not borrowing, you're not paying interest, then you're paying yourself back. So is it, does this, does this same thing work? You have a, someone has a, people have 401ks, right? Can you borrow from your 401k? Sure, you can. If you don't have an emergency, do, do you go to your 401k or do you emergency fund first? Emergency fund first. If you, uh, if you have $3,000 in the emerging fund and the hot water heater goes out and you lose all four tires in your car, you don't have enough money, then you, you may have to tap in your 401k. The nice part about tapping your 401k, and I, I actually have this, so this is a personal plan. This is what I'm thinking about. I have a mortgage on my house. I max out my 401k. If I borrow from my 401k, I have to pay myself back, but I can still contribute to my 401k. So I think, uh, I have to pay myself interest in my 401k. So I think when that 401k balance gets high enough, I am going to borrow against my 401k and pay off my mortgage. Right? And then I'll pay myself interest in the 401k, and then I'll contribute at the same time, and then it's all good. Right? So there's, there's different ways you can use all these different tools uh, and that's just, that's just an idea as a, as a possibility. Comparison shop, you just asked about this. Always look for any money you're gonna borrow. Don't go to one place, they're gonna give you, they're gonna, they're gonna size you up, okay, they look educated, and then they're gonna give you the price based on your credit report and all that kind of stuff. Okay, they look, this is why when you, when, you, when you read the statistics and you see younger people always get charged more interest, people of color always get charged more interest. Why, right? Say that again? It's so, cynical. it's no, it's very, I mean, be cynical. You should be cynical. Sometimes they're easy tar easier targets, right? Simple. They size them up, they size people up, and they make a decision. And that decision is based on credit report, they'll look it up, what they look like when they walk in, they'll, you're right? So when I, whenever I go to a banker, it's funny, because I have buddies that are, that are in development that wear jeans and t-shirts every single day, right? The day they go to the banker, they're wearing a suit. It, are they any different? Is their credit score any different? No, it's image. Image is important when you're dealing with bankers. Maybe always. Check out the emerging cash options with your bank. So your bank probably has overdraft protection that costs you almost nothing because it protects them, right? Use them for that. The four C's. Capacity, you've got to have the ability to make the payments. Capital, they're going to look at your assets. These are what they're going to look at. Um, your character, what's your history? Have you paid back notes before? Have you ever defaulted on anything? Have you ever declared bankruptcy? Collateral, what do you have that they can use to back it up? If you ever start a business and you wanna, you wanna borrow money, the bank will ask you for collateral. If you actually incorporate and it's no longer your, you know, it's not your money, it's the business's money, you're a corporation, you're the sole owner of the corporation, but it's the business's money, they may still ask you for a guarantee so that your personal assets are on the line if the business defaults on the note, okay? So it's, it's possible to actually say, no, I don't wanna give you a guarantee, I'm gonna shop it around. If everyone asks for a guarantee, you have to pick the best terms. But a, a personal guarantee on a corporate loan, because again, you can, anyone for $800, you can incorporate anything. You can incorporate a business, right? So if you add your personal guarantee, then your assets are personally, li you're personally liable for whatever the corporation does. Mm -hmm. So try not to offer a guarantee. So these are some of the capacity issues. How long have you been working? What's your income? What are your monthly expenses? You know, there, there's limits. 
you know, loan to value limits, these kinds of things. Capital, what's in your bank accounts. This stuff isn't on your credit report, by the way. Right? They don't have this information. So it's the only information you give them. But they ask for statements. When I bought my first house, he said, my parents gave me a $10,000 loan so I get for the down payment, but I, that had to be seasoned in my account. They, I couldn't actually get the money from them. It had to be my money. So my parents gave it to me three months early. And so it's seasoned as two months in the account. <laughs> Character. Credit problems in the past. Okay, credit report. We're going to go through Equifax, Experian, TransUnion. These are the three places you can go to get a, um, a single credit report. These are, all, these are the credit bureaus. There's three of them. Usually what happens is the lender th throws out the high and the low and looks at the middle or averages them or something like that. But they'll look at all three. So what's in it? All your who you are, where you work, um, credit history, any inquiries that other credit agencies have looked at. So the problem, if you go, if you go to, a, if you go to a, um, multiple banks uh, and you, you say, I'd like to borrow money from you, I'd like to borrow money from you, I'd like to borrow from money from you, with the intention of only, making one, only borrowing from one place, all three of those banks' inquiries show up on your credit report. And if you stimulate that, if you make that happen, so if you've, you've started the process, that can actually count against you because you're looking for lots of different credit. However, if you get those, when usually, well, sometimes you get a special credit card uh, offer in the mail. Sometimes they've actually checked your credit, credit report out first before they send it to you. So they look at you to see if this is the right kind of, you know, for you. Now, that doesn't hurt your credit report. So all your public record judgments, uh, tax liens, things that, things that you owe, that's all there. Bankruptcies, anything you're in collections on, it's all on your credit report. Is that 100% though? Bankruptcy, probably 100%. But there's a lot of things you can go into collections on that don't end up on your credit report. And one of the best ways to keep things off your credit report is actually to communicate with the person that you owe money to, to whom you owe money, right? So if you talk to them and say, well, work out, we can deal with payments, they may not put it on your credit report because they have to report it. It's work for them to do that. B of A, it's all systematized. They're going to do it. You know. But if you can discuss it with them and work out terms, maybe it's okay. So seven to 10 years, bankruptcy. You don't want to do this. This is absolutely the last resort of any kind of credit problems you have is bankruptcy. But there's a time for it. You know. Hopefully, none of us are ever in that uh, position. I actually went with a client through bankruptcy but they had assets, this is an interesting story. So they had assets and we knew it was probably they were gonna clear bankruptcy and they owed a bunch of money in a house and so what they did is they took, they took some of the cash that they had, the assets that they had, and they bought uh, a house. They bought a very small condo, their place they were gonna live. So no debt, paid for it outright. And then let the, let the bank take the old house that was way underwater and, uh, and, and it sort of transitioned that way. Then they went into bankruptcy, got to keep this one, that one went away. Um, clean slate, seven years from now, they'll actually have pretty good credit again. So there's, there's ways to deal. What's not? They don't know your balances. They don't know how much money you make. Uh, they don't know your medical history. They don't, there's, a lot, they don't, there's a lot of things they don't know from a credit report, okay? Uses, obtain loans, mentioned earlier, to get to rent an apartment should be on here. Obtain insurance. Certain jobs require this. And it's like clearance. It's like, uh, uh, security clearance, almost. My job has a full credit check before you get the job. When I hire somebody, I've got to get them fingerprinted and get a full credit check. If anyone has any kind of outstanding liens or bankruptcies, they, they're looked at as a risk and we, we can't hire them. Reason denied, two, bad credit history, no credit history, right? So this is, this is an argument to have a debt that you pay off, whether you carry it and pay a little bit every month, I mean, it doesn't hurt to have a $1,000 debt that you owe $30 a month on. You just slowly pay it off and just pay it 30 bucks a month and build your credit, proving that you are uh, able to do that, right? So what is your credit score? It's just a number that calculated all together. This is what you're worth on a, on a credit basis. The one that most often is used, and I've never actually seen a Vantage score. It's out there. I've never seen one, uh, is the FICO score. This is what it's based on. So when, you ask, when people ask, uh, how do we repair bad credit? You start with the top one, past payment history. So you, you, look at your, you look at the credit report and you figure out where those things are that are digging your credit based on this, and you talk to those people and say, listen, I was a day late on this. Why is that on my credit report? And maybe you can convince them to pull it off. So there's, there's workouts for all of these things. If you're, 
really in trouble and haven't made a lot of payments, very difficult to repair, right? But there are, there are things you can do and say and work out. Outstanding debt, so this is if you have too much outstanding debt. So this is just ways to rebuild if you do have a problem. Just work down the list. How many people have more than one credit card that have a balance that have a, a limit that you don't touch? So you have access to credit, but you don't use it. Okay. So that can count against you on your credit score. Right. Yeah. Because you, that, means, that means the bank counts that as a payment that you will eventually will have to make. They're assuming that at some point you're going to take it out. And that counts against you. So this is where you go to request your credit score. So I'm going to give you guys a minute. This is, you can every year, every year you can go and get a um, free annual credit report. You can mail for it. You can call for it. You can do it online. And highly recommend it. So inside here, we have a sample credit report. It might be tough to read. Um, but it, you can see all the things on there. You can see it, it, personal information, social security, address, employment records, um, public record data. And then down a little bit, you see collection history, what's been, what's been submitted to collections, specific accounts you have, and then recent inquiries. The inquiries aren't, they're people checking your credit to see if you're worthy of a loan. They're not people you know, questioning whether or not you're good. All right. You should always check it for errors. Once a year, get it, check it for errors. So this is all really important. There's a lot of stuff out there on identity theft. How to avoid it, what to do if, you, if it's happened. Um, does everyone know that you shouldn't mail out of your own post box at your house? You should, never, you should always go to a post office or drop it in one of those blue boxes. You shouldn't put it in your, in your mailbox. Always review your credit card bills. So one of the things, like this, this has happened to me, where they put on a $1.27 charge just to see if you catch it. And then the next month, they put on a $4,000 charge because you missed the first one. They think they'll get away with it. Something to be very careful of. Does anyone just not look at their statements? Pay the amount and not look? Look. I'd go through charge by charge, line by line. I do it with every bank account. I do it with all the credit cards, everything. And this, is, this almost goes without saying, right? Have some locked place where you put these. So does anyone, does anyone have that piece of paper underneath their keyboard at work that has all their passwords on it? <laughs> Uh-huh. You do, don't you? Yeah. Okay. So this is the steps to rebuilding your credit. Someone had, someone had asked about it. You apply for a small loan. Credit a local store. Helps build your credit. You know, buy something on, it's not layaway, but, you know, your JCPenney credit card. Make a large down payment. Negotiate credit payments. So sometimes a bank will say, um, or anyone you're borrowing from will say, well, if you're going to borrow that much, the rate's going to be here. You're going to use a car as collateral. You want, you want to only put $1,000 down. What if I put $4,000 down? Can we bring the rates down? You know, so you can, you can negotiate these terms. All these terms are negotiable. Banks want you to think they're not. Right? They want you to think you walk in, they give you rates, and they give you information, and that's the way it's going to be. And you can walk away and talk to another bank. It's always negotiable. Pay your bills on time. Debt level's low. Ask a friend or relative to co-sign a loan for you. It's got to be a good friend or relative. Last one's collateral. You can use a car for collateral. That's why I have a picture of a car right there. Make it clear. It's green. It's a bug. It's cute. Okay. Any questions? Excellent question. Question is, what's the difference between shopping around for different loans and then and how, how do you separate from going to shop for different loans from keeping those to show up and hurting your credit? Yeah. Right? Great question. So you can actually discuss with a banker what's the likelihood before you apply and fill an application. So you can say, this is my situation. You know, this is my credit. This is my information. This is it. What would this look like if I borrowed from you? So it shows up on your report if you apply for it. So that wouldn't. That wouldn't show up on your credit report. We're just doing, we're not filling out an application. We're just talking to a banker. Okay. Right? And so then when you fill out the application and they start running the credit, that's when it hits your scores, when they run your credit. So we've done make. We've done save. We start with Plan and Grow March 9th. Thank you for being here. This has been awesome for me, and I hope you've uh, gotten something out of it.